Well guys, week four of the pantry challenge, we're also going to kind of combine this with the freezer challenge because we're going with a different angle this week. But first, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Stephanie and welcome to Pantry Living. It had come to my attention that I have never shared my name on the channel. I just made an assumption that everybody knew me. I don't know why. But anyways, I'm Stephanie and thank you for following along with Pantry Living. So this week for week four, we're going to be doing some winter canning. We're going to be restocking the pantry because it's starting to look sparse in a few places and we have a lot of stuff in the freezer that we could be putting into the pantry. So as you saw, I guess it's two weeks ago now, we had to bring in all of our root vegetables from the porch because it was freezing. And what you see here are my turnips. We are going to be making pickled turnips. These are fermented pickled turnips. You know the kind that you get on like shawarmas and things like that. They're amazing. If you haven't tried them, definitely do it. I am not going to go into too much detail on this because we do have a recipe video, which I will link above. I think it'll end up over here. Uh, but we're just going to quickly whip through this, get the ingredients in and get these jarred up and they'll have to ferment for three or four days before we can put them into the fridge. So let's get going. So you can see here, I basically cut up all our turnips into matchsticks. So I'm not sure exactly how much weight wise I put into this bowl. I just cut up everything that we had because it was starting to kind of go soft. But I did four quart jars sterilized in the oven. So that's basically where I'm at. I have four of these fermenting uh, tops. So that's basically where I'm limited is I can do four jars. So hopefully this is four jars. So we're going to start with three cups of water. Then we're going to add two cups of white vinegar, half a cup of pickling salt or coarse sea salt. And in here I have one tablespoon of fennel and one tablespoon of coriander. So that's basically it for our brine. And then in each jar, I'm going to put one bay leaf and two cloves of garlic, along with a bit of sliced beet to give it that pretty pink color. So we're going to get these all organized and jarred up and we'll show you how much we got in the end. But definitely check out that video if you're interested in doing your own batch. All right, guys, I'll get my big pot out of the way. We've got our bones out of the freezer, lamb bones all cooked up here, roasted, and we're going to get them in the pot with all the grease because we're making lamb broth. Same old, same old. We've been making lamb broth for weeks, it seems like. But we're going to get all the bones in here. We're going to do our two onions, two carrots, two celery, and get some herbs and salt and pepper in here. It's going to be wonderful. And uh, can this up again. And you don't want to leave all the good stuff. Everything goes in. And then we'll just strain it all out at the end. We're actually going to use some of this broth to make lamb stew. Well, we are down in the basement getting dinner. And when I take these two jars of lamb stew off the shelf, there will only be two more left. So we're going to have to get making some more uh, lamb stew. All right, guys. So tonight we are going simple on dinner because as you can see, I am working away on my big pot of lamb broth because we're going to be making some lamb stew. And the reason why? Well, there's very few jars left down there and we're having two of them for dinner tonight. This is a simple, easy way to cook dinner. Put it in a pot, heat it up, and away we go. All the work is pre-done, and I like that when I'm in a hurry. Let's make some lamb stew since we're in the process of cooking some lamb broth with all those bones that we just got from the butcher. So we're gonna dig out eight pounds of lamb stewy meat. Those are, what is that one? You filming this? <laughs> I don't remember what this is. See, this is the problem. This really is a problem. That's more chops. I thought that was stewing meat. I don't even know what that is. Hmm. It looks like a whole bunch of chops and shanks. Not stewing meat at all. So we're going to have to dig to the bottom of this again to get our stewing meat. All right. Let's see if it's under here. I did not realize I had all this on top. Oh. Ah, uh, yes, nice. Nice! That's just not going to be eight pounds, though. Six. Six pounds 
We need two more, but I can see them already in the box. We made our lamb broth. So now I need to remove all of that lard that has settled on top. Now, yes, this has herbs and seasonings in it. So this is not ideal for maybe baking or things like that, but it is wonderful when you're frying up some potatoes or a little bit of rabbit meat or something like that. So we keep this, I'm gonna cook it down, pour it into a jar. It's gonna work perfect. I probably am gonna put some in the freezer cause I've got a lot of lard going right now because we've just been doing so many lamb projects, but this broth, we're going to use what we need for the lamb stew, and then the rest of it's going to get canned up to go down to the pantry. But the lamb stew is the part that we are working on today. This recipe, five pounds of lamb meat. You need three quarts of cubed potatoes. Yes, mine still have their skins on. You need two quarts of sliced carrots, three cups of celery, three cups of onions, and basically some salt, pepper, and thyme, and then just pour in enough broth or water if you don't have lamb broth uh, to cover that vegetables. And we're gonna get this up to a boil before we jar it. One thing I do like to say is I do not put thickeners in my stew at this point. I don't can uh, cornstarch or flours or anything like that when I pressure can. I have had bad experiences with it. It separates, it's never as good. And I end up thickening it again when I open the jar anyway. So for me, it's more ideal to just leave it as it is and do that sort of stuff when I cook it up later. So we're gonna get busy, not gonna bore you with too many details, but we're gonna come back when we're jarring this up and see what we got. So this could be fun. I'm gonna try and show you how thick this layer is. So if I tip it, oh my goodness, it's crazy. I'll try and get it out as one piece. Oh, it broke. <laughs> I was trying. Oh, look at that. I'm just scraping off all the broth. It's quite cold because it has been out in our porch. But look at that. So we're going to break that up. I've got another pot here. So we're going to break it up. We're going to put it into the pot and then I'm going to heat this later so that I can just pour it into jars. But you can see it's got all the wonderful spices, the thyme, the salt, pepper, things like that are all going to be mixed in this. So it does make for a very nice oil for cooking. All right. So first thing we're going to do is brown our meat. And once they're browned, we're going to put in our onions. Then we're going to add all the rest of the vegetables and the broth up to, uh, you know, sufficient amount covering all the uh, product that's in there. The one thing I am going to say is because we're in the middle of the pantry challenge, I only had two cups of celery. So what I'm going to be using as well is our dehydrated celery leaves. This will still put the flavor in. It won't give the bulk, but it'll still work just fine. And it allows me to keep a few pieces of celery in case there's another project that I want to do before the pantry challenge is up at the end of February. So. We're going to brown this meat, get everything in, and I'll bring you back when it's time to can this up. This is going to be a tight squeeze in this pot. Is it going to fit? I might have to take some out because I normally make it in that pot, but I had the broth in the pot. So as you can see, this is extremely full. I normally would cook it into this big pot, but because the broth was in there, I figured I'll use my other canning pot. I figured it would fit, but I know I always cook a little bit more than the seven quarts because I like to have enough for a meal because it just makes sense when I'm cooking anyways. So hopefully this will cook down a little bit as I uh, put some broth in and let it simmer. But the basic gist is now we need to bring it to a boil and get it into jars so we can get it in the pressure canner. All right, so as you can see, we've hit a bit of a problem, a snag, if you will. Uh, I can't get any more broth in here. I can't stir it. There's just too much in this pot. So this is an eight liter pot. I know I can take some out of this, which will be for dinner at some point this week. So I'm going to do that so that I can just add a bit more. So I haven't put in any of the spices or anything yet, but once I get this to the point that I can stir it, we need to put in three teaspoons of salt. I actually like to put a little bit more than that, but the recipe is for three teaspoons. Um, but I, I do like a little bit more than three. One teaspoon pepper and one teaspoon of thyme, and then we'll get it stirred up and get it to a boil, and then it'll be canned. 
if uh, you're interested in a more detailed uh, recipe video, I do have one coming out next week for this stew. And uh, stay tuned for that because uh, it goes through the canning process a little bit more in depth than what I'm going to do in this video. And there we have it. Our seven jars in the canner. Plus, I put the remainder of what was left in here and mixed it in with that uh, one liter that I took out. And we've got enough for dinner. Unfortunately, after using the three liters of broth out of what we had uh, made, I don't think I have enough to really warrant canning this yet. So we're going to start another round. All right. So one of the things that I have to say, and I, it's, I do find it really quite funny, is I really have to figure out expanding my wardrobe. It's so funny now that I'm paying attention to uh, what I am wearing when I film, I realize I wear the same couple sweaters over and over and over again <laughs> throughout the day. And I change like three times a day and it's so weird. So it's it's one of those, I know it's silly, but it's one of those things that I'm just observing is <laughs> I'm in this shirt again. <laughs> but anyways, that's homestead life. So today we are working on that second pot of broth. You saw us remove from that first pot of broth what we needed for the lamb stew, but I didn't have enough left to actually make it worth canning a big batch of broth. So I took two packs of bones out of the freezer and uh, we've got those roasted off. They're beautiful and glistening and wonderful and it's so nice to actually move them into the broth while they're still warm and it's easy to scrape it out. But that is one thing I do want to say. It's very important to make sure after roasting that you scrape all that fat and everything out of that pan into your broth because that is what gives it the mmm flavor. And uh, so we're going to let this broth simmer for pretty much the rest of the day now. And then at the end of the day, we're going to strain everything out of it. We're going to let it cool overnight so that we can then take that layer of lard off the top as you saw in the last batch you can sometimes get quite a layer, which is very useful for a lot of things in the kitchen. Today, I'm even putting some uh, rosemary cut fresh off of our plant. We finally had to bring it in because the weather's gotten too cold for it to be outside and I'm a little worried it might be dying. So we're using as much of it as we can. I need to jar up my lamb broth. And I think I've probably made more than my pressure canner is gonna hold, but that's just how it kind of works around here. But that's okay, we've got some plans for supper that we'll use some of this. But it's been great because I've actually managed to get five packs of bones out of the freezer for this lamb broth and the lamb stew that I've made, which takes up so much space. Let's get this broth canned up. And there we are, 17 jars, not 18, but that's okay. All right, so I know that this is supposed to be a canning week, but this kind of ties in a little bit because we've been having roast chicken and that left us with some leftovers that I want to make into broth tomorrow. So we need to get the rest of the meat off of those carcasses and use that up in dinner tonight and then we'll be making broth. So stay tuned for that. But this led us to something that I've been super excited about trying. Now, we went to Freshly. I know you probably can't read this, but I swiped their little takeout menu thing because it was one of those things when we were there, we're like, why can't we do this? Why don't we try? So tonight we're gonna to be making chicken tikka bowls. And basically what they were, were quinoa, brown rice, all sorts of good stuff, all mixed in there with some chicken. So that's what we're planning to do, so stay tuned. But first thing on the agenda is going to be making crispy chickpeas. Honestly, roasted chickpeas had no idea they were so awesome. So we had tons of dry ones, but of course I wasn't prepared to get those going. But I have a couple reserve cans just in case down in the pantry. So we broke one of those out and we're just coating them in a little bit of olive oil, some smoked paprika, and they're going into the oven at 425 to bake up and get wonderfully crispy. They're kind of like croutons on a salad, but they're chickpeas. How awesome is that? Anyways, that's where we're starting. Then we're gonna make some chicken tikka, and then hopefully we can put these bowls together and make them look just as pretty as they do. So basically I'm just drying off any excess moisture and trying to get the little skins out because apparently you don't want those in your crispy chickpeas. <laughs> you watch, they're gonna roll all over the place. I should have maybe gone with an edged pan. I'm really excited for these. Guess what we're gonna be trying to figure out how to grow. We're gonna have to grow some more chickpeas. Definitely stay tuned to Hickory Croft Farm, their channel. See what we get up to. 
All right, so we've got our chickpeas in the oven. I'm super excited for those. I really hope they work out. We have our squash on here steaming. Now that we're using instead of sweet potato, because if you go to Freshly, they use sweet potatoes, but we don't have any of those. I've got my quinoa cooking here. Never made this before in my life, so hopefully that works out. Going on the principle, it's similar to rice for cooking. And now we're gonna make our chicken tikka so that we have the meat with the sauce to put on top at the end. And then all that's left is some Julian style carrots and cabbage. And basically that's it. We would do kale as well, but I didn't go pick any from under the snow before I came in. So we're, we're skipping the kale portion. But anyways, I'm excited for this. If it all works out, I will put the link for the recipe for the uh, chicken tikka masala saucy type thing that we're putting on there in the uh, description below. So we'll bring it back at the end when it's all ready to go and plate it up. Oh boy, crispy chickpeas. Hopefully they're crispy. Oh, they sound like it. We'll let them cool off a little bit. Well, we'll see, moment of truth here. So we have our quinoa with lentils, the squash, maybe a little bit of cabbage, a little bit of carrots, and the chicken tikka on top. The only thing missing is the red onions, but I put them into the sauce, so I didn't want to cut more. There we are. Well, it looks pretty enough. Again, I didn't have kale, didn't do the red onions, so it's not as veggie intense, but that's okay. I'm excited to try this. We're going to take a little bit of the quinoa with a little bit of the chicken and the squash. It kind of looks like it's going to be hot, but we're going to try it anyways. Let's get some carrot too. Why not? Wow. That is really, really, really good. That is really, really, really good. Wow. I will definitely put the link for that tikka masala sauce and that is going to be canned coming up soon because that is worth canning. I forgot to make sure I got one of the roasted chickpeas. Sounds crunchy. It is. I forgot to put salt on them, but all in all, really, really good. This is a win. So yesterday we made our broth out of those silky chickens you saw us eating and it basically simmered all day. It smelt amazing. I used my usual recipe of two, 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 two onions, two celery, two carrots. And now we've strained it all and it has sat overnight. So we've got kind of a layer of the fatty stuff that we want to get off the top and then we're going to heat it back up, get it into jars and get it into the pressure canner. So all in all, broth's pretty easy. It only needs 25 minutes in the pressure canner. So that's what we're up to tonight. And then that'll be the end of week four on the video. We're also uh, doing some stuff in the water bath canner at the same time. So it's crazy canning this week. So one thing Chris and I were just saying was kind of interesting with this broth is it's quite a bit darker than what we remember our other chicken broth being. And I would imagine that's just because the silky bones have that black tint to them. Same with the meat. When, so it's kind of made our broth a little bit darker, which is sort of interesting. But if you're interested in learning anything about uh, the silkies, definitely check out Hickory Croft Farm because there's a reason we chose silkies and it has to do with their meat. So we ended up getting nine jars. Three of those, three, <laughs> I can count. Three of those jars are actually 750 mil and then the other uh, six are 500 mil. So super pleased with that. A little bit left over, which you're gonna throw into the fridge for a future type meal. But we're gonna get this pressure canner on and that's pretty much it. So I really hope that you have enjoyed this week's video. Stay tuned for next week. I have no idea what we're going to get up to. I've kind of looked at some recipe books, so maybe we'll be trying something new. Uh, that's always fun. Although we tried something new this week. So hey, we're always doing crazy things around here. So we'll see you on the next one.